Hey there, I hope you're doing great. My name is Nate and let me share a trick I came up with where user has to select a maximum of three items. Let's jump in. So here is my slide and I want the user to select the maximum of three items. They can select four or five and six is right out. So one, two, three and they can select all because this is just a simple slide I came up with for our tutorial here. So how can we limit this? Like this. First, we're gonna create a variable. We need a way to track this number of selected items. So we're gonna add a variable here and we're gonna call it max q. It's gonna be a number, we're gonna start with zero because selection at the start of the slide is zero. So now we want to add one, so let's adjust the variable, add one to max q when state of our first option is selected. Quite simple. We're gonna duplicate this and now we have to invert it. What if it's not selected? We're gonna subtract value one when it is not selected. Bam. Now we can easily select these two triggers and paste it on the other items. We have to go one by one, otherwise it will combine the states for one, two, three, four, five, six into one trigger, which we don't want. It has to be separate. So we can see here, one, 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 subtract one, add one, and let's display this variable on the slide and preview to see if everything is working correctly. So one, two, three, four, five, six, it's six. We can deselect and get back to zero. That's perfect. Now the tricky part, the fun part. How can we limit this to three items? which means we somehow have to see what happens when we get the number four. Here's the trick I came up with. So let's start with option number one. We want to change the state of option number one to normal if user clicks option number one, if, you guessed it, have you guessed it? Max Q equals value Four. So what's gonna happen is when user clicks it and max Q is four, it's gonna go quickly back to normal. But because we have the trigger is not selected, it's gonna also subtract one, which means we get back to three. So this all happens instantly and the user can't even tell that it's happening. I mean, I can tell and I know, I know it's happening. And that's the nice part about this trick. So all you have to do now is copy the trigger, select the other options, paste it. So it's automatically applied, option three, option four, and so on. Now let's preview. So one, two, three, now we get to three. And now when I click number four, it gets to four. It gets back to normal. It's not selected anymore. It's got back to three. And it's beautiful. I have to deselect one to select another one again. When you come back to four, you cannot select anymore. So there you go. I think that's the easiest way to do it. I think all others would be more, just more difficult to track and see if it's four, then change back, blah, 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 blah. This one is simple. It can easily be applied to multiple items. You know, you don't have to track the variable and which state is selected and so on. Just apply directly to the options and you can have, I don't know, 20 options here. Just multiply it on different slides, delete the ones you don't want, everything works. And it's easily adjustable for more than three items. You could be four, five, whatever. So I hope you found this useful. I know this was fun to create uh, for clients project and I uh, hope you can use it in your project too. Have a great day, everyone.